episode 88. Harry could hear Filch's rapid, shuffling footsteps coming nearer and nearer, his wheezy voice raised in fury. What's this racket? Wake up the whole castle, will you? I'll have you, peas. I'll have you. You'll... And what is this? Filch's footsteps stopped. There was a clink of metal on metal, and the wailing stopped. Filch had picked up the egg and closed it. Harry stood very still, one leg still jammed tightly in the magical step, listening. Any moment now, Filch was going to pull aside the tapestry, expecting to see Peeves, and there would be no Peeves. But if he came up the stairs, he would spot the Marauder's Map. And in visibility cloak or not, the map would show Harry Potter standing exactly where he was. Egg? Filch said quietly at the foot of the stairs. My sweet! Mrs. Norris was obviously with him. This is a tri-wizard clue. This belongs to a school champion! Harry felt sick. His heart was hammering very fast. Peace! Filch roared gleefully. You've been stealing! He ripped back the tapestry below, and Harry saw his horrible, pouchy face and bulging, pale eyes staring up the dark and, to Filch, deserted staircase. Hiding, are you? he said softly. I'm coming to get you, Peeves. You've gone and stolen a Triwizard Clue, Peeves. <laughs> Dumbledore will have you out of here for this, you filthy, pilfering poltergeist. Filch started to climb the stairs, his scrawny, dust-colored cat at his heels. Mrs. Norris's lamp-like eyes, so very like her master's, were fixed directly upon Harry. He had had occasion before now to wonder whether the invisibility cloak worked on cats. Sick with apprehension, he watched Filch drawing nearer and nearer in his old flannel dressing gown. He tried desperately to pull his trapped leg free, but it merely sank a few more inches. Any second now, Filch was going to spot the map or walk right into him. Filch, what's going on? Filch stopped a few steps below Harry and turned. At the foot of the steps stood the only person who could make Harry's situation worse. Snape. He was wearing a long gray nightshirt and he looked livid. It's Peeves, Professor, Filch whispered malevolently. He threw this egg down the stairs. Snape climbed up the stairs quickly and stopped beside Filch. Harry gritted his teeth, convinced his loudly thumping heart would give him away at any second. Peeves said Snape softly, staring at the egg in Filch's hands. But Peeves couldn't get into my office. This egg was in your office, Professor? Of course not, Snape snapped. I heard banging and wailing. Yes, Professor, that was the egg. I was coming to investigate. Peeves threw it, Professor. And when I passed my office, I saw the torches were lit and a cupboard door was ajar. Somebody has been searching it. But Peeves couldn't. I know he couldn't, Filch. Snape snapped. I seal my office with a spell none but a wizard could break. Snape looked up the stairs, straight through Harry, and then down into the corridor below. I want you to come and help me search for the intruder, Filch. I, yes, Professor, but... Filch looked yearningly up the stairs, right through Harry, who could see that he was very reluctant to forego the chance of cornering Peeves. Go, Harry pleaded with him silently. Go with Snape. Go. 
Mrs. Norris was peering around Filch's legs. Harry had the distinct impression that she could smell him. Why had he filled that bath with so much perfumed foam? The thing is, Professor, said Filch plaintively, the headmaster will have to listen to me this time. Peeves has been stealing from a student. It might be my chance to get him thrown out of the castle once and for all. Filch, I don't give a damn about that wretched poltergeist. It's my office that's clunk, clunk, clunk. Snape stopped talking very abruptly. He and Filch both looked down at the foot of the stairs. Harry saw Mad-Eye Moody limp into sight through the narrow gap between their heads. Moody was wearing his old traveling cloak over his nightshirt and leaning on his staff as usual. Pajama party, is it? he growled up the stairs. Professor Snape and I heard noises, Professor, said Filch at once. Peeves the poltergeist, throwing things around as usual, and then Professor Snape discovered that someone had broken into his office. Shut up, Snape hissed to Filch. Moody took a step closer to the foot of the stairs. Harry saw Moody's magical eye travel over Snape, and then, unmistakably, on to himself. Harry's heart gave a terrible jolt. Moody could see through invisibility cloaks. He alone could see the full strangeness of the scene. Snape in his nightshirt, Filch clutching the egg, and he, Harry, trapped in the stairs behind them. Moody's lopsided gash of a mouth opened in surprise. For a few seconds, he and Harry stared straight into each other's eyes. Then Moody closed his mouth and turned his blue eye upon Snape again. Did I hear that correctly, Snape? he asked slowly. Someone broke into your office. It is unimportant, said Snape coldly. On the contrary, growled Moody. It is very important. Who'd want to break into your office? A student, I dare say, said Snape. He could see a vein flickering horribly on Snape's greasy temple. It has happened before. Potions' ingredients have gone missing from my private store cupboard. Students attempting illicit mixtures, no doubt. Mm, Reckon they were after potion ingredients, eh? said Moody. Not hiding anything else in your office, are you? Harry saw the edge of Snape's sallow face turn a nasty brick color, the vein in his temple pulsing more rapidly. You know I'm hiding nothing, Moody, he said in a soft and dangerous voice, as you've searched my office pretty thoroughly yourself. Moody's face twisted into a smile. Or as privileged, Snape. Dumbledore told me to keep an eye. Dumbledore happens to trust me, said Snape through clenched teeth. I refuse to believe that he gave you orders to search my office. Course Dumbledore trusts you, growled Moody. He's a trusting man, isn't he? Believes in second chances. But me? I say there are spots that don't Come off, Snape. Spots that never come off. Do you know what I mean? Snape suddenly did something very strange. He seized his left forearm convulsively with his right hand as though something on it had hurt him. Moody laughed. (laughs) Get back to bed, Snape. You don't have the authority to send me anywhere, Snape hissed letting go of his arm as though angry with himself. I have as much right to prowl this school after dark as you do. Prowl away, said Moody, but his voice was full of menace. I look forward to meeting you in a dark corridor sometime. 